there is something I already wanted to watch yesterday, but we didn't have time. And I, I have received my, uh, my lunch. So let's do that real quick. And that's Magical Hats, Pug. New Magical Hats episode titled, Our Going Second Staples Fair. And now, that's a good... That's, I, I'm going to have some things to say about this. And I, have, I probably have some opinions on, on some of these Going Second Staples that might surprise some people, but we shall see. This one tilted me. You've triggered my trap card, the Magical Hats. In this series, myself and three of the top Yu-Gi-Oh! streamers will give their unfiltered, uncensored, and uninformed takes on some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s most pressing issues. The catch? One of these four has a fake take, and it's up to the rest to find the liar. It's time to play Magical Hats. Dan, leave this one in the video. And welcome back to another episode of Magical Hats. We're all chillin', we're grillin', we're villains. I got me, I got Coder, I got Farfa, I got Nim Nim. Anyway, today we're talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh wow, cringe. Today's prompt is about a class of cards that I am lobbying to be called equalizers and no one is picking up. Uh, a series of stuff that you jam into your extra deck and then deploy when you go second, board breaker. That makes no sense. That makes no sense to call them equalizers. I'll I'll, I'll just say that right off the bat, because they never have never has it ever been equal after those cards have resolved. That is not what's happening. <laughs> Evenly is an equalizer. When does it ever look equal after one guy has resolved evenly matched? There's no shot like that. That they will never. That will never catch on. Uh, we are asking, are they too good? Are you, saying, you mean side deck, not extra deck? Did I say extra deck? Yeah, you did. Equalizers and extra deck cards. Let's go. Uh, no. <laughs> Dan just dub over the... Side. Side. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's schmix it up a little bit this time. Gage, you want to go first? Oh, I, <laughs> I can't. Wait, what? Why is Gage going first? Oh, God, that's going to get you confusing. I mean, I suppose I'll go first. Okay. My take on this is I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is unlike any other card game, right? Compared to, like, all the other big three, Magic the Gathering and Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! is just in an entire realm of its own, even baked right down to the bare minimum of, like, their resource system. And I think because there is, like, no resource system to keep the game flowing at a steady state, Yu-Gi-Oh! is, like, the only game where you can literally vomit your entire hand on the board and make cards just make insane value, right? You can go plus 20 in a turn, which that's just not physically possible in most other card games. So I think it's also... Uh, in that same line that we can say, like, these cards, these equalizers, as Joseph would like to put it, definitely uh, are, I think, at a comfortable level. I think we've had a lot. You know what? I'm actually going to give you my opinion before I'm going to listen to all of theirs. Because I just want to get it out of my system. I think in the state that Yu-Gi-Oh! is um, right now, or in modern age, Actually, let me wait for the ad to finish because I think there's one running right now. So I shall I shall wait so everyone can uh, everyone can hear. Okay, so I think I think in 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 modern Yu-Gi-Oh, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, I think these cards, as it currently is, are necessary. I think cards like Evenly Match, Lightning Storm, Feather Duster, whatever, I think those cards are necessary. But I don't think that they are fair cards. I don't think that they are fair cards. And I think in an ideal world, or in a world where I get to de design, uh, like, you know, if it's all for, if it's all my decision on what cards are being printed, what cards are being banned, whatever. I would try to make the game in a way where those cards aren't necessary. Um, because it's always like, you know, uh, if, if, if Dark Ruler No More is not a thing, then how do we beat unbreakable boards? So Dark Ruler No More is necessary, which is like, it's not a wrong statement, but you could still ask the question of like, maybe we should just get rid of both things, right? Maybe we should get rid of the unbreakable board 
and the dark ruler no more and then we're in a better you know we're in a better environment altogether you know what i mean I, I i had the same argument recently when i talked about someone i talked to flood i talked about someone no i talked to someone about floodgates and they asked they asked if he, if if i think that cards like lightning storm and feather duster are fine and I said the same thing. I think those cards are necessary, a necessary evil in the game because you have a certain you need to balance out the per the win percentage for trap decks when they get to go first, right? Because trap decks, if there was no mass macro removal going first, they would pretty much always win. Um because you would just never be able to out their floodgates consistently, right? And I, the, the thing is, I would balance this out by just, uh, I personally, I would remove the floodgates and then I would also remove the mass backer removal. And I think every single game involving trap decks would then be more enjoyable for both parties, right? Because as of now, every trap deck match in 2023 Yu-Gi-Oh! is pretty much trap deck tries to floodgate. And either wins by a blowout floodgate or opponent has the blowout. Like, it's just trading blowouts. It's not at all about control anymore. Right? And I would remove that aspect altogether. I would remove it from both sides. I would remove the blowout cards from both sides. Because I think blowout cards don't really make Yu-Gi-Oh! that fun. I don't think it's that fun to, uh, to get dusted to get evenly matched to get sphere moded whatever i think all of those cards like side decking in general has become just a you know you're just trying to auto win the game you're not even trying to you're not trying to uh you're not even trying to like play the game normally after siding anymore it's like every game this these days after siding is like i'm gonna play these blowout cards and hope to draw it. And if I don't, then I probably don't win, you know? So I I, I, I find Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot more enjoyable uh, in game one, actually, these days at tournaments. I think, I think game one is more enjoyable than game two and three most of the time. It depends on the format. This is not a generic... Uh, it's not always true, but for the most part, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is a lot more fun game one these days. Um, because I also think deck building for game one is a lot harder because cards actually have drawbacks, right? If you want to play, I think evenly in best of in, in game, in game one is fine because you, you put it into your deck with the risk of going first and drawing the card, right? That, that balances out evenly match. But when there's like, when side decking is involved, uh, and we get to decide who goes first and second, it's pretty much, you put these cards into your deck with no drawback. And if they resolve, you probably just win the game, right? And this is, once again, I'm not saying I want best of one. I am not a fan of best of one. That is not what I'm saying. Don't get me wrong. Please don't, you know, twist the words. I think best of three is better than best of one. I just think the fact that we have these, all these blowout cards makes the games that we play after side decking a lot. I think it makes it worse. I think the games after siding are worse than the game we have before siding. A lot of going second cards released in the recent years that have really pushed the limits of what thought like could be possible earlier on. Cards like Dark Ruler No More, even Ultimate Slayer to a point people thought was really crazy, but they've proven to be pretty fair, right? I know it's really frustrating to get your board Dark Rulered, but in a meta where Dark Ruler No More is like the, the, con like the considered going second staple, you can still play around it and make different boards to uh, adjust for it. So I think the cards that have been pushing the limits, like the evenly matched, like Dark Ruler No More, Lightning Storm and stuff like that, although they seem really powerful on paper, they still are just powerful enough for them not to be broken. I think these going second cards have been uh, designed really well recently, and um, I'm pretty sure they're all fair. Yeah, I guess I'll go next if we're going in opposite order. I hate to agree with Gage, because I think that that's probably the most suspicious thing you can do. <laughs> um, but I, I think that when we look at going second cards, 
you see a sentence like the one on Dark Ruler that's like, all monsters negated, you can't respond with monster effects, and you go, all right, that's like the most broken thing ever, right? Um, but in practice, I, I think he's right in that there are ways to play around almost every single one of these. A Dark Ruler, for instance, uh, you know, uh, famously during virtual world format, you would like chain the Chuche to, and then you could respond with like the thing that would actually counter the Dark Ruler. Just say his name, uh, Joseph. The thing is VFD. Cash has done it. Just say it. <laughs> oh, VFD. Yeah, it was VFD. <laughs> but like Cash Tira, for instance, is a deck with a clear weakness to going second cards. And, uh... and this is, I think, another good point. It's a balancing issue. And on most of, like, it's not only a balancing issue for those cards, but also for the decks in the format, where with all those board breakers being present, with all those board breakers being present in modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's really, really awkward because most of the decks, like, we have so many decks that fall out of the meta just because they can't beat one of those cards, right? You're like, if your deck has not a single plan on how to deal with evenly matched, but it its plan is to summon a bunch of stuff turn one and end on like five cards on the field, if your deck doesn't have a plan for evenly matched, it's basically unplayable, right? And so they kind of had to design, they had to design these decks to be like, okay against evenly, okay against uh, Raigeki, Darkhole, okay against... Um, Sphere mode, you need you need that you need the way to play around that, you need a way to pl play around that, you need a way to play around that. And as it turns out, there's just a freaking uh there's a freaking blowout card for pretty much any deck and any situation in the format. You know, we can we can almost pretty much tribute every number of monsters your opponent makes. We have a kaiju if they summon one, we have lava golem if they summon two, we have sphere mode if they summon three. They summon four, I guess there's Kurikara or something, like, or, or if they commit way too much, we have Nibiru. Like, you can do that. You can you can remove all their you have removal for all their back row, you have destruction for all their monsters, uh, you have single target the destruction. Like, it's, there's so many options that like it, it can be tough, I think, from a design perspective to to make well balanced archetypes, right? Um, yeah. And as a result, I feel like they try sometimes to make decks have ways to play around these things. And then sometimes decks end up being way too powerful because they can play around all these board breakers really well. And then sometimes they forget some and then, I don't know. It's just, at the end of the day, there's probably a blowout for every deck in the game right now. Which is not, I don't think it's the greatest feeling. I do think it's better... I do think it feels a little bit better than having only hand traps at your disposal. But I still think that sometimes the balancing of these is off. Uh, Genosaur, thank you for the 11 months. What's happened instead of, you know, people just saying, oh, if you draw it, you draw it. Uh, people have transformed their play around them, taking what would be an exceptionally boring match in, you know, lock 15 zones and pass into one that actually has interplay because they're playing with respect to those cards. Um, I think they're powerful for sure, but I think that going first is so crazy that you're going to need something like decently. Okay, that's, a, that's another very good point. If those cards did not exist at all, the current format would be a lot worse. Because, obviously, if people were not playing around Lava Golem Sphere Mode, or Nib to an extent, then, you know, like the, the, the theoretical impact that these cards can have is very positive. I think that is a very positive thing, right? People that play around cards, even when you don't have to draw them, but they because they could be in your deck, your opponent has to play more conservative. That's a good thing powerful in order to beat back that level of advantage uh i i think they're in a good spot and i think the fact that a lot of them cards like lightning storm for instance aren't seeing play proves that like they're fine all right uh i guess it's me so i completely agree with uh gauge and you i suppose um when you look at cards like evenly matched dark cruller like if you read these cards like 10 years ago you would think like this is a custom card like this is something someone posted on reddit because they were so salty about dragon rulers or or spell books not or true. something. Like, in theory, if you... I'm sorry to pause this much, but that's actually not true. I'm pretty sure that Dark Ruler No More... Dark Ruler No More 
would have probably never seen play until I don't even know what year we would have started to play Dark Ruler no more or Lightning Storm. But like those cards would have been so bad in early Yu-Gi-Oh. Like those cards are those cards are only a necessity and only a product of uh of modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Modern age Yu-Gi-Oh um is even the reason why these cards see play. Like that, that that's you print Dark Ruler no more in 2003 and no one looks at that card until like 2018. I don't know in what year exactly you start doing it, but like those cards are awful. And the same is the same goes for Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is like such a turn one centered card that back in the day we would have never looked at that card. Like uh, like th those cards would all have sucked. Th those cards are only here because Modern Yu-Gi-Oh is all about vomiting as much as your hand onto the field on turn one as possible, which isn't always a bad thing. Like the the game is still the game is still good, but you have to understand that these cards only exist as like they are only here to cure some of the symptoms, right? They are not actually inherently insane Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Some of these, right? You activate Dark Ruler against a, mo a combo monster deck, you should sort of just win on the spot or evenly against a back row deck. But with modern Yu Gi Oh!, there is almost so many ways to play around this. Like you can summon boss monsters in defense to play around Lightning Storm. A combo deck might have some sort of searchable Omni, ne uh, Omni Negate trap card to stop Dark Ruler. The thing is, like wiping the board doesn't even guarantee that you have a way to win that turn. I mean, there's cards like Maxi and Mastodo, for example, that you still have to contend with. And hand traps, I think, bring a lot of, um, I suppose, counterplay to all of these equalizers, as I suppose you like to call them. In general, I'm really in favor of going second being strong because you can probably count on one hand the amount of times going second has ever been optimal in any given format. So turboing out something like Zeus is very powerful, but again, like sometimes this kind of this kind, these kind of cards like don't actually just win you the spot. But right now, I think we're actually in a very very perfect equilibrium and a like a really perfect sweet spot i don't think they should be stronger than where they are but i think they're good enough to really shake up the game and make you think about how you play going first okay well i guess i will uh i will i will close it out here um so the prompt was are are going seconds second cards getting too strong or are they too strong and whatnot and i think on the contrary i think they're all pretty weak um and I mean this, like, obviously, like Nadir said, if you read Dark Rule, you read Evenly, you're like, this is a custom card, this is broken. We've had so many formats in Yu-Gi-Oh! where drawing Evenly with nothing else to break a board didn't even break the whole board. Or, like, you would Dark Ruler a deck, but then, like, they could still have back row or hand traps, so that doesn't even, cr like, clear the whole board by itself. I think going second cards are significantly weaker than they appear to be and i think this is like really obvious in the fact that there has been no good going second deck in a long time like you will you can pull up to an event playing a blind second deck and stuff like that it is almost always like playing from behind you are not playing the most optimal strategy if you are playing a deck built to blind second i think the only example in my opinion of going second cards that are in some way too strong is cards like Kaiju's Lava Golem Sphere Mode. I know that they haven't been like really crazy that often, but when they are, these cards like you know the format's really busted when you have to play these cards, but those cards, in my it's opinion, literally are this format. Where the <laughs> what's up? This format, like literally no, I, this fair, format. Fair, very, very fair. But I'm saying like it, the the formats in which those cards are good are like few, like and far between. But I definitely think yeah. that um, those non-answerable like i get i guess dark ruler is non-answerable but like you can have like you know like nadir said like a searchable trap omni negate kind of thing whereas like lava golem sphere mode kaijus is like yeah you don't even get to you haven't had the chance to breathe and you're the guys already on your board you know what i mean i think those are probably the only ones that i would consider are a little too cracked when they're really good but i don't think in general uh, going second cards are even very good at all. I think they're they're just okay. They're necessary from time to time, but by themselves, they never win you the game, which in my opinion is where they should be. I got a question for everyone, I suppose, and that's um, in the context of Rogue, for example, I think they might be too powerful. So I'm wondering how you guys feel about 
these equalizers going into Rogue. I mean, if you resolve evenly match against you, Kevin, playing Unchained, like, there's almost no counterplay to that, right? No, there is. There, There is. In, in Unchained specifically, there actually is counterplay, but I see your point where, like, a lot of Rogue decks will just fold to these, the like, and stuff like, like really crazy... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think, um... I don't think... That's not necessarily Rogue a decks thing, losing to these cards... Like, that is... That is that is always going to be true for any like any certain subset of cards. Like that should be the case because that is why decks are rogue decks because they perform worse into popular cards or deck choices, right? Like if your deck loses to popular cards, that's why it's a rogue deck, right? So like it, it, it that's it, it just it just makes sense right it just makes sense for it to be because like if we did let's say we didn't have board breakers then like okay maybe hey my 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 labyrinth deck now is a lot stronger because uh, it cannot beat even the it, it doesn't lose to evenly match anymore because that card doesn't exist anymore so that therefore my deck is now better okay and then you're gonna have other popular cards in the format that other decks lose to and now those cards are rogue decks and we have to have the same discussion again, right? So that's kind of pointless, right? Your deck is worse than other decks because it doesn't beat cards in the game. Like, that, that, that's how it's going to work. That's normal. Speaks to how powerful the cards are themselves. I think it maybe reflects the weaknesses of the person playing the rogue deck, right? Like, if you're playing, like, Fright Fur or something like that, you get slaughtered by even Lehman. What, what loses the Fright Fur? Like, Battle everything? Fader, I, don't <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, man. Like... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think that's just a flaw in the deck itself. I don't think that really makes uh, a, a better case to say like these cards like evenly and lightning storm are better. Okay, so what 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 I find interesting here is that all of them said that they are in favor of them being like they they said they are all they are they all said they are fair, right? They all said they are fair, and if anything, even a little bit too weak, I think. So who doesn't actually think that? Because like Kevin said, though, like uh, even you were getting to somewhere where it's like you have to sometimes pair Which two I don't cards know. together to do anything. Like mm -hmm. if you're playing Lightning Storm, great card in general. Either I like, like Raigeki your board or I Harpy's Feather Dust you, right? Mm -hmm. On paper, incredible card. But against some decks like Tirashizu that we just saw, you Lightning Storm, I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> like, much. I, I think it really just depends on the deck you're playing against. Uh, I think the cards in general, though, I think they're... Fair, I think, is the, the the thing we came to. The only person that I'm, like, suspicious of is Kevin. He said they just weren't even good. No, I, I Okay, I'll, I'll clarify. So, what I mean by they're not that good is when I consider if a card is good or not, it's a card that by itself does so much. And going second cards that I would qualify as really good are stuff like Red Reboot, which is banned, and to some extent, um, Pankratops. I think Pankratops is a more powerful card than Evenly Match or Lightning Storm or anything like that. The card's a body and forces out a ton of shit. The thing you need to keep in mind is that Evenly Match, Lightning Storm, for the most part, in 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 most like uh, you know most duels you're going to be playing, those cards are going to bait out a negate. They won't do the thing that says on the card that it does. They will say one minus one negate on your opponent's board. Whereas Pankratops is able to trade for two. Red Reboot basically can't be responded to because counter traps are busted like that. That's why I'm saying they're not they're not crazy. They're like they are good cards obviously. The text on the card reads a, a good thing. But I'm saying you look at evenly mesh and sometimes you look at that evenly and you're like damn, I just wish this was an imperm for my opponent's starter. You got a take on this, Joseph? Yeah, you've been pretty quiet over there, Joe. Mhm. Mm yeah, I I really don't have anything to say honestly. That was a that was a pretty strong I think incorrect <laughs> statement from Kevin, but that doesn't mean he's lying. <laughs> okay, where do you, so so what do you think's incorrect about it, right? I I don't know if we want to go back to like talking about rogue decks, right? I think so. The problem here is I think we're we are mixing up terms because Pankratops is definitely not a more powerful card than evenly matched. I think what Kevin is trying to say is Pankratops is a more versatile card, a more consistent card, and it will more often do what you want it to do. And those are all true things. It is true when I draw 
a Pancratops going second, I know pretty much exactly what to expect from it. And it will very often do the same exact thing, which is like summon, uh, maybe go to the battle phase to out something, but most of the time it will just pop a card and that's very, very consistent and very versatile. The, que the problem is that there is no really, there's no, you can't really compare cards by like strength super easily because what, what there's different things that make a card strong right and consistency and flexibility uh, are only two of those things right and like evenly matched definitely has a strong impact in certain metas and formats that can be much higher than pancratops when you go second Right, and I I think it's I think it's not as easy as to say like yeah, Pancratops is a stronger card than Evenly Match because it's more consistent or more flexible because that's not true. Like in some formats, it doesn't matter. When you go second, if there's a best deck in the format that absolutely gets shattered by Evenly Matched, it doesn't matter. I I don't need my Pancratops to be flexible. I don't need my Evenly to be flexible. Uh, when it always does win me that matchup, right? It, in that matchup, it's a strong card, right? I think it just goes to show by how little play Pankratop sees. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've played Pankratops. I don't remember the last time Pankratops has been summoned against me, I think. I think it's just a matter of Pankratops is actually like too fair now. Because very, very simply, uh, when you... Like, Pancratops is something that no one is going to main deck, right? No one is going to main deck Pancratops. And if I'm looking at the side deck very often, I'm like, okay, I need a card for this and this and this matchup. And I'm like, is that ever supposed to be Pancratops? Like... Not really. The card being at one does not matter. The card being at one does not matter at all. Because if it was a if it was a really, really good card, you would still play it, right? You see Feather Duster all the time. Chat, you see Feather Duster all the time, dude. Feather Duster is being played so often. You see called by in almost any deck. You see so many cards that are limited. Like you, you guys act like the card is banned. It's not banned. People don't play it because it's not that good. Would you play Fenrir at one? That's like the worst comparison because Fenrir depends on having another... Like, a part of Fenrir is that you can search another Fenrir. That's very different. Also, I, I'm going to say it, you're not going to like it, but one Fenrir is still better than one Pancratops because Fenrir actually does something when you go first. Like, Pancratops can easily go to three. And even then, it would probably not see much play. The card is very fair. I would love Pancratops to go to three. What we should focus on is, like, the gameplay loop of rogue decks, right? Like, a lot of these decks, despite the fact that they're using, like, dog water... Hold on. One more thing. One more thing that I want to say is that a, a lot of their arguments has been circling around the fact that, like, there is counterplay to some board breakers in, in, in most popular decks. Which is true, but the result for that is only because we have so many different board breakers. And I'm going to include like Nibiru here too. If you look at it, we have like Regeki, Dark Hole, Lightning Storm, Feather Duster, Evenly Match, Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplet, uh, Nibiru, Kaiju, Sphere Mode, and Lava Golem. Those are the ones I could think of right now. There's probably more. Super poly. The, th the thing that happens, the thing that happens is that, yes, most top decks can play around a, a portion of these. And then the other portion is the one that sees play. I think you can very safely say that since the last couple of years, there's always been, for almost any deck in the format, there's been a couple of board breakers that really beat it. Right? I think the only exception to that that I can think of right now was Ishizu tier. I think Ishizu tier was the only deck that was just unbreakable. 
Like that deck, if you let that deck play full combo, you could not do shit. Like that deck would just beat you, right? Uh, I don't think any other deck had that where you couldn't realistically break the board with a, at least a couple of these uh, cards. As a result of that, I think for the individual cards, you could be like, okay, Dark Ruler is fair because you can play around it by setting up interruptions from Grave, Hand, and Back Row, right? Fair point. You can play around evenly matched by maybe summoning a card to your opponent's field or setting up one negate. Fine, right? Okay, evenly is fair. You can play around Raigeki by summoning monsters that can't be destroyed by card effects, maybe, or that trigger when they're destroyed. Uh, you can play around Lightning Storm by summoning your stuff in defense. Yes, you can play around this by doing that. I think for each individual card, this argument works, right? You could argue that, okay, Lightning Storm is fair because X. You can summon all in defense. Fine. Works. The problem is that I don't think you can play around the concept as a whole these days because there is way too many options for board breakers that exist, right? You play around, you play around Lava Golem, you play into Kaiju. You play around uh, summoning, you summon everything in defense to play around Lightning Storm and then suddenly your opponent like goes into, into Zeus because they can easily crash into a defense position monster and make the Zeus. Uh, they, you, you play into, into this, you, like, it's, and so I think that, I think that individually, all of those cards are probably fair, but as a concept, I think it's sometimes not the best design. I, I do think that it is necessary because of how powerful going first would be in Yu-Gi-Oh! if we didn't have these cards right now. And I do agree with Nadir when he said, currently, it feels like we are in, a, in an equilibrium between going first and going second. I, I do agree with that. I don't think going second in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is that bad. You don't do it on purpose. Like, if you can decide, you go first. But it's not the end of the world. It's not a dice roll format. It really isn't. But I still wish that the I still wish that the 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 board breaker blowout cards just weren't necessary, right? I wish that the the things that make those cards warranted, like the unbreakable boards and stuff and stuff, just didn't exist in that fashion, and therefore we didn't have to view these cards as necessary, if that makes sense. Because as of right now, those cards are necessary. Don't get me wrong. They are. I just wish they weren't, is what I'm saying. Uh, because I don't love... I don't love all of their... I don't love all of the dynamics that they create. Uh, Swamp Boat and Mac Attack. Thank you guys for the primes. I appreciate you guys. Cards for babies. Uh, they're still trying to do something that's like comparable to existing strategies, right? Like Valon, for instance, is like an awful archetype that just FTKs, right? And so it loses to Nibiru in the same way that what like Kashtira would, right? So I, I think... Valence. Oh, Valence. Valence. It's, it's like Valence. a I, I, don't know if he, I, I don't know if he was talking about, about Valence or Valence, like... <laughs> the Valence. Uh, when we're talking about like, uh, like rogue strategies losing to... Uh, you know, going second tools. I think that's because the rogue strategies almost universally are trying to do something unfair. Like, oh my God, going second tools beat Dark World. Like, good. I don't want them to Silva hand loot me. Is does that mean the uh, going second tools are too strong? No, I think it means they're in a good position. Like, they're well designed. That's Farfa, true. Uh, you had a point. You were saying like you really enjoy decks being able to go second. And one question I ended up having was, do you enjoy these decks being able to go second on the merit of like the deck themselves? or being able to go second because of all these generic cards hmm. that are possible to be played in that deck. Do you think that that's what makes it fun? <laughs> or is it like, I don't know, I'm beating people outside the box with a strategy they're not Yeah, expecting. I don't know, like whenever I think of go second perfection, I always think of that like Honey Orcus deck from ages ago that was like blind second with Vishuda and Mind Control and Pankratops. And in some ways I think like, I don't know if that was really the engine itself that was, obviously it helped, but I mean, there was just like a lot of like staples 
generically like the mind controls and the Vashudas that just really helped you. Yeah, I think that's really good. I, I think that's the best. That's when Yu-Gi-Oh is at its peak. It's when you're able to pick apart and trade one for one and then a one for two and stuff like that. I think that's actually when it's like at its most fun. You yeah, but like that is a counter argument to almost anything you said before. Like that is exactly what I'm saying is that those types of those types of games, the ones where you trade one for one and whatnot, those are not the games that you create by playing evenly matched. The uh, the games you create by playing Lightning Storm, the games you create by playing Sphere Mode, the games you create by playing uh, whatever those cards are, right? You don't do that anymore. I think that's the whole thing. That's the point. I, I wish we could do that. I wish I could go second and draw, like, what is, like, two fair going second cards? Like... Let's say I can draw, I don't know, a mind control and a, uh, and a, let's say, let's use Pankratops, right? Let's use Pankratops. I think there's almost no deck in the game right now that you can just beat with mind control Pankratops. Or Alpha, dude. Alpha is like, oh my God, I wish Alpha was playable. I wish Alpha was playable trade one for one and then a one for two and stuff like that. I think that's actually when it's like at its most fun. You you would like my Unchained deck, bro. My blind second Unchained is literally three of every Unchained card, three Lightning Storm, three Dark Ruler, three Evenly Match, three Kaiju. That's just how I build the deck. I think Nadir... <laughs> so. I would like to change no, but I, answer. No, but I mean, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Because like that doesn't win. Like that's I I play this in Unchained, and the deck's still ass. Like that doesn't. Win. Well, yeah, you're playing <laughs> Unchained, Kevin. You, what do you after want? After you resolve <laughs> Dark Ruler, you have to normal summon <laughs> like Sasahara or whatever. <laughs> you're literally <laughs> playing Unchained, Kevin. Like I don't. No, but yeah. but like no no deck, no good deck in the game right now prefers to go second, and I feel like it's been so long since a deck in the game preferred to go second that was like a good meta strategy do we want to guess this is because i can tell you why this is i can tell you why this is it's because the the balancing of Yu-Gi-Oh fundamentally is currently still heavily uh tipped into going first going first in Yu-Gi-Oh is just busted right now uh and you would never, you would never, or like you don't want to, never is the wrong word, but like you, you just don't want to give that advantage up for the chance of going second and drawing one of those blowout cards. Because that's the only advantage of going second is that you can play the blowout cards because no deck, no deck actually is good at going second without those cards right now like there is some decks that do it better than others you know some decks maybe have like a, a slightly better chance to win going second than others but for the most part for the most part nowadays Yu-Gi-Oh, you go second you draw you draw no non-engine at all and your opponent performs a full combo with a meta deck you've probably lost the game unless your opponent either messes up big time or gets really unlucky and I think that is a that is the fundamental problem that makes these blowout cards warranted. At the same time, I don't think that makes them fair because if you also look at it from the other player's perspective, sometimes you go first and they have that one blowout card that you just can't play around that you or did you can't prevent, right? And then all of a sudden that also doesn't feel fair because like what is that what did that player do to deserve losing the game right they didn't play worse they did their normal first turn stuff and their opponent just happened to draw the blowout card for it like that's not a very interactive gameplay either right where you're just flipping the script you're just flipping the script instead of like the the the, the player going first just doing what they do and just winning the game off of it player going second like you know just battle face evenly game's over right like that is not it doesn't promote. It does not promote healthy in, uh, interaction. You don't. Ha I don't feel bad if my opponent makes a broken board. You don't have to feel bad. No one should ever feel bad about winning with a certain card. It's the same way. You shouldn't feel bad by winning with a floodgate either. That doesn't mean that you have to support the the design of floodgates. But only because you don't like the design of something, you can still play it. If it's good, it's good. Just play it, dude. Just win your games with it. 
It doesn't matter. That's not the point. It is not it is not unethical to to play the best cards in the game. Like that is not a thing. You don't that is not, you know. It that doesn't work like that. It's just that I feel like it's Fundam there's a fundamental problem with going second right now, which is that most decks simply cannot win going second against what other decks are doing going first, which makes those cards um, necessary. And I wish that was not the case, because whenever you do not draw one of those going second cards, it actually feels like such an uphill battle that you're probably losing. Right? Um... I think the only solution to this problem could be that if they if they just started slapping effects on cards that would make them a little bit stronger going second but don't really make them more powerful going first. But they they would still have to be playable going first, right? Unlike Pancratops um and preferably like in engine. Like you know maybe maybe you just make a card that like mole cricket yes mole cricket is a great example where that card is completely reasonable going first but if your opponent it has just it has this bonus effect right where if it if your opponent has the biggest monster i can i get more value out of the card which makes my deck a little bit stronger going say incredible ecclesia is another great example of a card that is absolutely reasonable going going first Therefore, you can main deck it. You don't have to go blind second to, pl to play Ecclesia. Um, and then, you know, but going second, the card becomes better. A uh, card like Talents is also actually, I think Talents is, is fine in that sense, right? Because if people play Hand Traps, you can actually play Talents going first, right? And I think, um, I think those are the solutions we need in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, for most of those problems. Because very simply speaking... Uh, Cards that you need to hard draw that are outside of your engine will never really fix the problems of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, a card like Dark Ruler No More exists, uh, existing will never fix the problem of, of combo decks being too powerful because what the hell if you don't draw Dark Ruler? And I'm, I'm probably almost never going to be able to main deck Dark Ruler because I still want to go first, right? So I would need cards that are good uh, main decked and, like, beat... Uh, decks that can beat decks so going second right and i think ideally those cards would also not have to be blowout cards going second right because the only reason also you need blowout cards is because most of the time your opponent makes a board it invalidates half of your hand right look at the current format is a perfect example of this you summon a naturia beast for example, your opponent's hand most likely only has three playable cards. So those three cards better be impactful. Those cards cannot be one-for-one one trades. Your opponent summoning an Arise Art against most decks in the meta invalidates half of their hand, if not more. So that last card that you have better be impactful, right? And I think that is a, a flaw in 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 just card design you could you could uh, you could fix that in card design relatively easily by just making a couple more cards just a little better when you go second right without giving them additional effects when going first like i think it's a very elegant solution to print cards with like a good effect and then they're like if your opponent controls more monster than you you can also special summon it or you can search an additional card or you can, you can, you know, pop a card on the field after you do that. If there's, you know, stuff like that, I think is very, very underexplored. I, I just miss the times when you could go second game one and just win by drawing a normal Yu-Gi-Oh hand. You know what I mean? By drawing the cards that are, that you, all you, all you want in your deck, it, game one, even if you go first, like that hand I want to have when I go second. You know what I mean? The only deck that I remember that being the case was Ishizu tier did that. Uh it it didn't have many like Ishizu tier did that with like Kelbeck and Havness. There was like cards that were good going second. Uh Runic 
is also very close to ideal card design, in my opinion. You might not like it because you've played against Runic Stun one time too often. But the fact that Runic has exactly that, all of those are extenders or utility cards, is great de like design-wise. I, I love that so much. The fact that I can play a deck full of engine, but still have three MSTs in my deck, three negations in my deck, three destructions uh three special summon destructions in my deck i love that design i think it's insanely cool the fact that i don't have to worry about freaking uh floodgates game one because i have three msts in my deck which no other deck in the game can freaking play mst because the card just sucks but um yeah anyways that's my two cents I have, I have a guess. I have a guess. I feel like I'm so wrong. I don't know who the imposter is, though. Uh. Okay, who of those... Who of those four... Because they all said going second cards are okay. Who of them actually hates it? It might be a Farfa angle. I think it's a Farfa or MBT angle. I never, I've never, I never, I've never seen Farfa complain about going second staples. I don't think it's Gage. This time, somehow. I feel like I am unbelievably wrong. You know what I've noticed, by the way, is that I'll every just say time MBT. we do this, uh, anytime no one has a clue who the imposter is, they just write my name. What's the deal with that, huh? Explain. <laughs> uh, we find you are a very imposter yeah. style. <laughs> just, uh, it's every time the lights go off, say. I just I don't know where you're at. All right, everyone ready? Three, two, one. It's me. Yes! Yes! Yeah, that's what I had. Did you guys both write Joseph? Yeah, we got I him. Joseph, we got yeah. him. Uh, I I feel like my back was against the fucking wall because i haven't been the imposter in weeks yeah you've also you were just extraordinarily like more quiet than usual that's the strategy you just <laughs> yeah. let him cook. that was yeah, because that, i was what, you, what are you doing let him cook yeah dude that was because i was suppressing my real take which is that all of you are dumbass dog you shit think they're too good you think they're too good relax, good? Out. Oh, relax. I, what is your take? i don't give a fuck if evenly matched is good or not the gameplay that happens when i draw evenly matched is not fun like, I don't give a shit if Lightning Storm is a good card or a bad card. If it's ever being played, it's going to lead to a sacky non-game determined by if my opponent has drawn the part of their deck that deals with the dog shit going second card versus did I draw the dog shit going second card that wins me the game instantly. I think Kevin talking about Lava Golem, Sphere Mode, Kaijus, exactly on point. Dumb shit, unrespondable, auto-win garbage that determines games. Zero fun to I play mean, it's with. Not auto when I was win. talking about Jesus, like... Jesus, bro. Well, it's close. <laughs> Uh, when I was. That's what I said. I mean, not exactly, not that exaggerated. I feel like my opinion was a little bit more, a little less drastic. I think in general, I don't, yeah, I don't think they are dog shit design. I just think it's, yeah, it's more nuanced, basically. It's just like, I, I wish they weren't necessary, right? I see why they're necessary, so I can see the positives about them. I, I do see the positives that they provide for the game and the environment, because if we didn't... I'm, I'm, I can't help but think, like, what if we didn't have any of those cards, right? If we didn't have any of those cards, you would basically auto-win so many games going first. Even after siding. If those cards did, did not exist, there's a billion decks that going first just win. They just win. No questions asked, right? No questions asked. If I go first and all of those cards don't exist, I can make a board that you cannot beat. Very simple, right? And there are a couple of dynamics that these cards create that I think are really good. Like, for example, Sprite Carrot. You summon a Sprite Carrot when you go first. Your opponent activates a spell card that you would normally like to negate. Like, I don't know, a terraforming. And because of evenly matched existing, it makes 
negations like that a little bit worse. I've had a bunch of games where my opponents would have a negate, and normally if they knew my hand, I could not play through it, but because they're scared of certain other cards, they don't negate a card, and then I actually end up being able to play, right? And maybe I can end up winning a game because they use their negations suboptimally because they're playing around me having a card like evenly matched in my hand, even if I don't, right? But that's only a very small subset of games because I do think that it is true. I said this earlier, the gameplay that happens when those cards are involved is not very good. Like, your opponent either negates it or they lose very often. And like, you know, I wish that wasn't the case. I wish it wasn't the case. I think it would be as simple as you need to make going first in general less powerful. And if you if we manage to do that, if you manage to make the game a little less centered around having to go first, I think it's fine that everyone wants to go first. It's just the inherent advantage that comes with going first uh, are, I think, a little bit too much. And I think if we can do that, you know, make going first a little bit less broken, and that actually affects that affects multiple aspects of the game not just the combo boards also like the trap decks right trap decks are also inherently more busted when they get to go first right uh if we can balance that out a little bit if we could balance that out a little bit then we could also think about you know removing some of those cards from the game Reserved by like going second cards being uh, extremely good. The the gameplay I'm talking about is people in Cash Tier are making a Rise Hard pass. That sucks ass. If I wanted to play a game that slow, I'd play Magic. Like <laughs> I'm here to watch like cool shit happen. Like I I I just like I cannot tolerate these cards. I think they are so unfun. Uh, whatever. I don't know if I'll ever be happy with this this analysis here at the end, but <laughs> I'm glad I sniffed it out. We got him. That's <laughs> the most <important> thing. <laughs> See you all next time. Bye bye. Bye. Joseph, I meant to ask. Um, somebody asked me in my chat today. <laughs> what did they ask? Okay. Damn, I love magical hats. That is a great format.